this video, I'll be talking about how to secure remote management access on your Fireboxes. The first thing I'll cover are the common configuration problems related to opening up remote management access on Fireboxes. Then I will talk about how to restrict the management policies. And then I'll talk about an alternative to that, which would be to use a VPN to access these boxes remotely. And lastly, I will cover some suggestions for the management users on the Firebox. This is a pretty common scenario. You're on your management computer and you want to access a Firebox across the internet at another location. Obviously, you can allow the traffic through the Firebox at the main site, but how do you configure the remote box to allow connections from your main site or any of your other offices? The first thing you need to determine is which locations are you going to be allowing management access from? If it's just your headquarters, or is it going to be multiple other offices, or will it just be any random location? Do you want these fireboxes to be accessible while you're traveling? In this particular example, we just have a single computer connecting from one location to another. This is going to be one of the most common situations where you have a headquarters device and you're trying to reach some of your satellite offices. Let's first talk about some of the configuration options that you want to avoid when you're doing this kind of setup. First off, you do not want any policies that are wide open to the internet. This would include policies that have the any external or any aliases in the from field or source field. These policies would also include the firebox or any aliases in the to field or destination of the policy. These types of policies may also include management ports and protocols with the firebox or the external interfaces as the destination. These would include policies that are created using the any template or type custom policies that you've made that include the management ports, and these ports would be 8080 for the web UI, 4117 for WSM, and 4118 for the CLI. Let's take a look at what one of these management policies would look like with a configuration that is open to the internet. So here we can see we have the Fireware web UI policy on port 8080, and the from field has any external, and the to field has Firebox. That means that anyone out on the internet can access this Firebox on the management port and reach the web UI login page. This is the type of configuration you want to avoid. Let's go ahead and fix this policy and make it more secure. What I first need to do is remove the any external alias. I will need to add the IP address for my headquarters site that I will be accessing this remote firebox from. Now that this IP address is added to the policy, only this public IP can reach the firebox on the management port for the web UI. I would need to repeat this same set of steps on the WSM management policy if that one also had any external defined in the from field. Here I am on the WatchGuard policy that is the Firebox management. This includes the port for WSM, the 4117, and the CLI port, 4118. 4105 is no longer used for management access. Here I can see the same problem. It has any external. You may see any external defined in this policy if you had added this alias when you are trying to grant management server access. However, this is not required for management server access. You would only need to define the public IP address that is used at the location where the management server resides. In my case, that will be my HQ. So I will go ahead and remove this again. And then I will add the public IP address where my management server is located. Be aware, you may also see the any external alias in the from field of your management policies 
if you are using a Firebox V or Firebox Cloud product, as those contain any external in the management policies by default. This is because when you're doing the initial setup on those virtual Fireboxes, you will typically be accessing them through their external interface, but once you have completed the initial setup, it is recommended to restrict the from field on the management policies for those devices. If I need more than a single site to have access to this remote Firebox, I can continue to add other public IPs or I can even add entire subnets. In this case, I will just add another IP address for one of my other offices. And in this example, both of these remote locations will have access to manage this Firebox on the WSM or CLI management ports. I could do the same thing on the web UI if I need access there, but regardless of which management interface you use regularly, you should ensure that both of the management policies are restricted on the external side. You do not want to have any external or the any alias in the from field of this policy. Now let's talk about another option for management access that does not require you to input IP addresses for each of your management policies. You can use a mobile VPN to connect to these devices and then access them through the internal interface. One of the benefits to this is increased security. You're providing credentials before you even reach the management interface. On top of that, you can use MFA to protect those VPN connections. So you get that extra layer of security before the management interface is accessible. On top of that, it's much more flexible because you do not have to go in and update your management policies with the public IP of every office or every possible location you may need to connect from. The mobile VPN would allow connections from anywhere, and once you are authenticated on that VPN, then you can send your management connections through that tunnel to the Firebox. It also provides extra encryption through that tunnel. And when it comes to the management users themselves, the users that you have configured on the Firebox, never use the default passphrases on any production equipment. These are available to the public. Anyone can find this information very easily. So always ensure you change the passphrases for these admin and status users. You also want to ensure that when you change the passphrase, you're using a longer passphrase. And notice here, I'm using the term passphrase, not password, because passwords are typically going to be short. You want to think of a phrase that's easier to remember and has more characters in it. In general, it's a good idea to come up with something that's at least 16 characters, but 20 or more is recommended. You also need to change these passphrases regularly. It's up to you what that interval may be. It could be every month, every quarter, a couple times a year. That should be defined by your company's security policy. And it's also a good idea that whenever IT employees leave the company or anyone who had knowledge of what these passphrases were, that you change those passphrases immediately. One more suggestion is to use the account lockout feature on the Firebox, as this will help prevent brute force attacks on any Firebox DB users, including the default admin and status users. Another recommendation is to use management users that are not the default admin and status users. You can create new management users on the Firebox, or you can even configure the Firebox to use third-party authentication servers. And once you have those set up, you can actually use something like an Active Directory account for Firebox management. That way you can manage the credentials and everything on your third-party server and you don't have to go into the Firebox and change these settings every time. Furthermore, you won't have to share the admin and status accounts or other management users with other IT staff since you'll be using your own account. 
which gives you the added benefit of having an audit trail so you can see exactly who was logging in and what they were changing. To wrap things up, remember you should only open management access to specific addresses or networks, not the entire internet. A better option would be to use a mobile VPN in order to connect. Again, more secure, additional authentication, and the flexibility that you can connect from wherever you want without having to update management policies with individual IP addresses. And lastly, change the management user information regularly. Set up a schedule that you adhere to, and also when somebody leaves the company, make sure you update it at that time. If you follow all of these recommendations, your remote management access should be much more secure. And please check out our knowledge base article and documentation on these topics, which you can find using WatchGuard Technical Search.